everyone take a deep breath here we go again <laughs> on a very wet Sunday it is raining at the moment you might notice outside that everything is looking very gray and very gloomy right now unfortunately but don't worry about that because I have a feeling there will be some sunshine coming through the internet any moment now because yes we are all together back together again in fact for another English addict live from the birthplace of the English language which just happens to be England <laughs> hi everybody this is mr. Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy I really hope you are feeling happy today because we are back together once more yes live across YouTube and well maybe the world I'm not quite sure about that we will have to wait and see what happens there but yes we are live and as you can see behind me just to prove <laughs> that my background is always live there it is it looks as if there is fog behind me but it is not mist it is not fog it is actually rain so at the moment here in England on this August day it is supposed to be summer but it doesn't feel like summertime to be honest with you it is raining at the moment so we will wait to see if the rain clears up so it might slowly move away revealing the lovely landscape behind me but I, I did want to show you something really lovely today as well because were you watching on Thursday did you see what I did on Thursday I was live from a place a very special place a well-known landmark in this area and we will be talking a little bit more about that later on yes it is English addict with me mr. Duncan for those who are wondering who is this strange weird unusual looking man well I will tell you my name is Duncan I talk about the English language I love talking about English I don't know why there are many things that I firmly believe about English one of them of course is that English can improve your life it can open many doors English is viewed quite often as an international language of course there are other languages that are used widely around the world however English is very common when people want to come together when they want to join together to exchange ideas so you do find and you will find that English is quite often the the base language for any meetings any group meetings even if you are doing things through the internet through zoom or teams or skype <laughs> there are so many choices nowadays so if you are doing any of those things you might find that English will be the base language and that is why I love English so much I'm an English addict and I have a feeling that you might be an English addict as well we are together again and yes as I mentioned a few moments ago we were up high in the sky on Thursday because it was my birthday last Thursday thank you very much <laughs> for all and I mean all of the messages through email also on Facebook and in the comment section on my YouTube channel so many many comments I can't reply to all of them I'm sorry I did have around 400 messages so I have looked at some of them but I haven't looked at all of them yet but I will try to get around to doing that I have been very busy for the past couple of days can you believe what Steve has asked me to do for the past two days I've been doing 
decorating painting some of the walls making certain rooms in the house look bright and cheerful because we do have a special guest coming to stay with us towards the end of the month mm -hmm. maybe we will talk more about that later on we will see what happens there and of course today we have mr steve we also have some topics as well we are talking about swearing using bad language however i can promise you today we will not be using any of that bad language we won't be saying the words so just in case you are worried that we will we will start swearing we won't we will not start swearing we will not use any bad language at all maybe perhaps <sighs> my birthday has come and gone and i've been busy decorating the house that's what mr steve got me to do i should have been resting and relaxing and enjoying the birthday atmosphere but unfortunately i've been working very hard a little bit disorganized today i will be honest with you there is no sentence game today i know a lot of people do not like the sentence game but also i know that a lot of people do like the sentence game <laughs> so if you don't like the sentence game you are you are in for a treat because there isn't a sentence game today however it will be back next week so don't worry about that can i say hello to the live chat oh yes the live chat is here mm, but who was first we will take a look at that in a moment yes we've made it all the way to the end of another weekend and the end of my birthday week <laughs> it's sunday yes we are back together and i hope you are having a good day where you are what is the weather like i know in certain parts of the world it is very dry and hot in some parts of the world it is very wet for example japan having a lot of rain at the moment here in the uk the weather is very strange not exactly summer to be honest if i had to describe the weather today it is more like april <laughs> so today even though it's supposed to be august and summer it actually feels like april very strange really swearing using bad language do you ever swear do you ever use curse words a little bit later on we are asking that question also we will be looking at spelling i think one of the hardest parts of using a language especially when you are writing by hand so i'm not talking about using your phone or your computer because of course nowadays you have things like spell check or predictive text so those things allow you to almost never make spelling mistakes however if you are writing by hand or maybe if you are typing something in a hurry you might make spelling mistakes so today we are going to look at some words that are commonly spelt wrong or incorrectly not only by people learning English, but also by native speakers as well. Mm, it does happen. Even the best, even the greatest, sometimes make spelling mistakes. So it does happen. We will be looking at that. We also have an excerpt from one of my lessons where I talk about that subject. Also, we have the mystery gift. Mr. Steve bought me some lovely gifts for my birthday. 
later on we are going to have a look at some of those gifts very nice gifts one in particular I'm going to show you but I'm not going to show you all of it I'm just going to show you a little bit of it and what you have to do you have to guess what the gift is so that coming up as well in fact I think we have quite a lot of things to talk about today another thing have you ever left a comment on someone's video or maybe you've left a review of a product or a service on Amazon or one of the other review sites and there are many another one that is very popular of course is TripAdvisor TripAdvisor is a website that recommends holidays and also people can leave their own reviews have you ever done that we will be talking about that later on today we have a lot to get through including lots of lovely people on the live chat and of course by that I mean you thank you very much for joining me today who was first on today's live chat oh hello there mmm interesting today a very fast finger I think you have Olga congratulations Olga you are first on today's live chat excellent can I also say a big thank you to Olga once again because Olga and also Valentin sent some lovely donations to my PayPal thank you very much to Olga so not only are you first on today's live chat but also can I say thank you to Olga for your lovely donation on PayPal and also Valentin as well your birthday messages and also your birthday donations thank you very much that's very kind of you because of course I do all of this for free everything I do is free I give it all away and I've been doing that for nearly 15 years everything 15 years on YouTube and I've never ever charged I don't do private lessons I don't do private videos because I want as many people as possible to to gain some advantage and to learn and enjoy hopefully the English language so that's the reason why I do it and I do it all for free however sometimes I do like to receive some donations which is very nice thank you very much congratulations Olga also Vitas oh Vitas you were second today you came in second place with your finger mm. we also have Beatrice hello Beatrice thank you for your birthday wish Vittoria also Palmyra Zuzika who by the way is a man Hello, Mayori, also Richard, Denek or Zenek, and we also have Luis Mendez is here today. Thank you, Luis. Nice to see you back as well. Rosa is here. Mr. Bruno watching in Switzerland. Thank you for joining me today. Hartran is here. I have a feeling that you are in Vietnam a big hello to you Maria ah, Maria Maria I'm saying hello to Maria nice to see you here Maria we also have Mosen thank you for joining me again apparently it is a special day today in India it is Independence Day apparently thank you for letting me know that Independence Day in India today so hello to India 
and I suppose I should say happy Independence Day to you also we have Victoria Grace hello Grace Grace Chin nice to see you back here as well so many people on the live chat already Willian is here also we have who else is on Jessica hello Jessica I don't recognize your name are you new here is it your first time hello also to Claudia nice to see you here today as well of course we are talking about Belarusia nice to see you back oh by the way I've realized over the past couple of days that I really do need to go to the dentist I have nothing serious don't worry don't worry my teeth are not falling out yet but I've noticed there is a little bit of buildup of something called tartar tartar and sometimes tartar can appear between your teeth or in those places that are very hard to catch when you're brushing so I have a little bit not much a little bit of tartar around my teeth so I'm going to book an appointment to see the dentist because apparently we can do that now the, the dentists have reopened and we are able to make appointments to see the dentist again so I will be doing that maybe next week or maybe at the beginning of September because as I mentioned earlier we have a special guest coming to stay with us hello Mika hello Mika nice to see you here again thanks for joining me I know it's very late where you are so I always appreciate if it is very late where you are I always appreciate your company because I do know that some of you stay awake until very late watching me <laughs> even though for many of you you might have to go to work the next day so I do appreciate that and yes I have heard about the weather in Japan it's very wet so some parts of the world are having lots of rain whilst others are having nothing but hot heat searing temperatures isn't it strange and of course there are two ways of looking at this maybe it is just a quirk in the weather or maybe it is an indication of something more serious such as global warming climate change a lot of people talking about that subject last week some of the experts were using words like doom I'm not sure if that's a good idea to be honest we should never overstate these things so I think using words like doom and disaster sometimes can be a little alarmist and the other problem of course is sometimes you might start to to make people uninterested or numb to these issues if you keep saying the same things again and again so I am not a person who who doubts climate change because I'm sure there is something going on because you only have to look at the figures and the records but I think sometimes it is very easy to overstate something if you overstate something it means you say something that is far far worse you are making something seem far worse or you are exaggerating something to get attention but the problem is if you do that too often people will just stop listening so I think sometimes it's best not to not to use words like doom <laughs> too often only use doom when you know that we are doomed but I don't think we've reached that stage just yet that's all that's just my opinion just my thought you don't have to agree with me you might disagree you might say Mr Duncan you idiot what are you talking about <laughs> something like that those are my usual messages anyway so here we go the live chat is up and running we have mr. Steve coming very soon and yes he is here today I'm hoping that mr. Steve will be ready because last week 
he was still eating his lunch last week so I hope this week mr. Steve is actually ready and joining us on time I think so hello sack sakshi hello sakshi Qatar who says I am from India hello to you and congratulations on your Independence Day but who did you become independent from mm -hmm. so our little quiz coming up today we are going to show you something and it is something that mr. Steve bought for my birthday so I'm going to show you that first before we do anything else here it is here is the mystery gift that Mr. Steve bought for me and all you have to do is guess what it actually is I think some of you will guess straight away but we will see so there it is the mystery gift that Mr. Steve bought he gave me this for my birthday on Thursday but what is it <laughs> I must admit I haven't made this too difficult it's it's quite easy actually but I wonder if anyone anyone will get this right hello Mariam Mariam bar jellies Mariam bar jellies says congratulations mr. Duncan I love your channel thank you very much that's very kind of you so the question is what is the mystery gift it is something that mr. Steve bought for me but does anyone know hmm <laughs> Mayori says mr. Duncan we became independent from the British that's right it was a very long time ago I wasn't even around I don't think I was anyway I think I was just a twinkle in the milkman's eye Olga oh very interesting we have some guesses coming through already for the mystery gift is it a stork stork a very beautiful bird a very beautiful elegant bird but it is not it is not hello Beatrice hello also Saturino Saturino nice to see you back as well so Mr. Steve will be joining us in around about five minutes but I thought we would take a look at an excerpt from one of my lessons where I talk all about one of today's subjects which is making mistakes getting things wrong when you are spelling words and it does happen it might happen to you it happens to me in fact I think from time to time it happens to everyone and then after this mr. Steve will be with us live English just like any other language has its quirks and idiosyncrasies that is to say the language is not perfect similar sounding words and odd grammatical clauses not to mention the odd spelling of certain words can lead to confusion even for native English speakers today I'm going to look at some commonly used English words that even those speaking English as a first language often get wrong our first commonly misspelt word is necessary the word necessary is one of the most commonly misspelt words in English this is due to the use of single and double letters within the word namely the single C and the double S our second misspelt English word is definitely this is a word that catches many people out mainly due to the sound of the third syllable which sounds like the letter A this leads many people to mistakenly replace the I with an A remember there is no A indefinitely 
There is definitely no A. Indefinitely. Our third misspelt English word is fascination. This word catches many people out due to the occurrence of the letter S and C being placed together. Many people leave out the letter S altogether. Whilst we are talking about occurrence, the word occurrence itself is another English word that is often spelt incorrectly. Occur has one R and two C's. Occurred, occurring and occurrence have two C's and two R's. Another commonly misspelt English word is separate. It is a common mistake to add an extra E to the word by replacing the middle A. Again, the pronunciation of separate can be misleading, especially so in this case as the word can be pronounced in more than one way. Two things can be apart or separate. You can separate two things, which means to split or divide. Separate, separate. Our final misspelt word today is psychology. This is a real stinker of a word to spell because it contains not one, but two silent letters. The P and H are silent. Another good example of this occurrence is psychiatric. At the end of this lesson, you will see a list of other commonly misspelt English words. How many of them do you get wrong? You might be surprised to learn that many people make spelling mistakes. Even I have been known from time to time to make the occasional faux pas or blunder whilst writing. For most of the time, it is due to a slip of the finger on the computer keyboard. Or at least that's my excuse. Spelling mistakes are nothing to be ashamed of as we all make them from time to time. I hope this lesson has been helpful to you and I will see you again soon for another English lesson. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying ta ta for now. Mm, and there it was one of my lessons many English lessons on my YouTube channel and that was all about spelling mistakes making errors making mistakes with the way you spell certain words <laughs> hey
Hello, hello, Mr. Duncan. Hello, yeah. wonderful, loyal viewers to he, Mr. Duncan's channel. Here he is, a guy who never <laughs> makes he never makes any mistakes. He's oh. one hundred percent perfect. There he is. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Duncan. I do make mistakes from time to time, but I will at least admit them. So how are you? How are you, Mr. Duncan? I've been busy, of course, out in the garden, but it's raining now. Yes which is just as well because I'm in the studio. What perfect, better place could there be when it's raining than to be indoors with Mr. Duncan, integrating and <laughs> interacting with everybody out there? OK, just, just, <laughs> just use any word. Exactly. Well, this, is, this is an English teaching channel. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it does help if you use the right words, though. Congratulations to uh, Nisa, Satnam, Maori and Sakshi, to name but a few, who are celebrating Independence Day from the British <laughs> today. Yes. 75 years. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. It, Congratulations. That, that, of course, is something we mentioned earlier. India, of course. India yes. celebrating their Independence Day today. Well, I hope you're having a lovely day. Uh, talking, of, talking of India and Indian food, oh. what did we do? On your birthday. Now be very careful because there are things I don't want to give away yet. OK. But yes, you are right. Last Thursday, it was my birthday and we went out. Well, we did a couple of things. We went to the top of the Rekin, the local landmark. Would you like to see it? Well, here it is now live. Now the rain has disappeared. So there it is. We were actually up at the top of that hill on Thursday we now for the first time we've never actually done this before but actually we we went to the top of the Rekin and we did a live stream from the top it was very windy it was lovely very pleasant day but the wind was a little bit strong and here are some of the lovely views as well that we saw from the top of the hill that is on your screen right now Oh, look at that. That looks very high up, Mr. Duncan, doesn't it? It is 1,300 and I think 75 feet. So 1,375 feet above. It looks more than that. Mm. So there you can see in the distance looking over towards Wales and the hill in the distance is the Brown Clee. And then over there in the distance somewhere is our house. But it's very small and far away. And there, of course, you can see if you look closely, you can see the chimney. And that is actually the remains of the local power station, which now has been partially demolished. It is no longer used. There are there are actually you know what they're going to put there, Steve? Houses. Houses. So About a thousand, apparently. Yes, a thousand houses are going to be built on the site where the power station used to be. So you can see the purple flowers. There is heather growing high up. So this is the place where we were on Thursday and we managed to do a live stream. I was amazed that it actually worked because we've never actually tried to do this before. We've never done a live stream ever from the top of this hill. So I was pleasantly surprised when it worked. And there you can see the peak so that is the highest point and that is what you can see from my studio during the day when I'm doing my live streams. So that is the point, the highest point on the Rekin Hill. <laughs> and that also happens to be the place where our television pictures come from. So that large transmitter that you could see just is actually what brings all of the pictures and all of our television signals to our houses as well in the whole area of the West Midlands quite a way. Oh, was that Mr. Steve? Was it? I think it may have been. Was that? There he is. There's Mr. Steve. Look, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I would imagine he's blowing his nose. It was very windy, very windy, uh, as you can see from those pictures. Yes. So there is another view looking across. I think there we are looking across towards the West Midlands, Wolverhampton, Walsall. So that that area is where we're looking towards there. 
but it was a magical day a super duper birthday in fact it was indeed mr duncan you did enjoy it and so did i yes and later as you mentioned earlier steve we did go out and we enjoyed a delicious meal we we went for a curry so yes anybody watching in india uh if you don't already know we love indian food in the uk mm. it must be i think it's the most popular restaurant type that people go to yes it's certainly and, a, uh, it's certainly a type of food that's eaten by a lot of people it is and uh, we feasted on 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 thursday night did we not mr duncan we did we uh, had a lovely meal onion barges um i had a chicken boona and you had i had chicken tikka masala yes now the the dishes that we get served in the uk are not 100 percent authentic they're no. sort of modified for the british palate the british uh, taste but i think they're fairly close but they they tend to be a bit fattier i think than you would probably have from india but i've never been to india i'd love to have some traditional indian cooked food mm. um but you know one day one day when we do our world tour starting with brazil of course that's where we were first invited to <laughs> and we'll tour around whole of south america then we'll go we're not going to america because we don't have many viewers <laughs> when you say america you mean the usa usa and then we'll uh, obviously go to india um and of course we've got to go to thailand as you've got lots of people watching in thailand yeah in fact udom uh, one pat sorry if i pronounced your name incorrectly says hi everyone from old man in bangkok uh -huh. thailand one of our regular viewers actually yes. you might not realize that but yes our old man in thailand i don't know how old you are or why you call yourself the old man but but thank you very much for your messages over the years because he's actually been watching us for quite a long time as yes. many people have and also thank you very much for all of your lovely messages i received about 400 messages so i'm still looking at them i haven't i haven't finished reading them <laughs> to be honest with you there are so many messages <laughs> all over the place that i'm trying to find and also read as well sounds like i was listening in before we uh, before i came on today and it sounds like you've got quite a packed show quite a lot to talk about today. a lot we have a lot to get through although we don't have the sentence game today don't so we no sentence game why not no we <laughs> well one of the reasons is because i was rushing around and uh, i didn't have time to prepare my sentence game however we do have a little quiz because mr steve bought some lovely gifts for my birthday so here is a close very close up view of one of the gifts that mr steve bought for me here it is now on your screen so this is this this is something mr steve bought for my birthday but what is it if you think you know what it is we've had some guesses already very close very near but unfortunately We've had no correct answers yet. So if you right. think you know what this is, if you think you know what this is, please let me know on the live chat, which is now running underneath this video or next to the video, depending on how you're watching me. <laughs> Nisa remembers that my favorite Indian food is alu, alu gobi, which is true. Mm. Uh, we didn't actually have any on the. Uh, on Thursday because we'd already ordered lots of food and aloo gobi is sort of something that you'd have as a side dish yes in the UK potatoes spicy potatoes uh, with cauliflower uh, and uh, we didn't I wanted some but I knew I wouldn't eat it all in no. fact I didn't eat it all uh, but oh absolutely delicious it is common though and I'm sure lots of people do this when you go for a meal you, you often order too much food and and I know I we've done this in the past haven't we we've we've gone for a meal and we've actually ordered 
a couple of extra side dishes so dishes that are extra to the meal you are adding these things to the side of the dishes and quite often you end up filling your stomach before you have the main meal especially if you have a starter and other things little snacks that they normally bring to you poppadoms poppadoms and naan and all of those lovely dips you can dip your poppadoms into exactly. so that, that's what happens and then you, you fill up your stomach you eat too much and then by the time your main course comes you can't eat it you can't eat it because you're so full of food it's very hot in in, in um, Italy uh, it says Giovanni uh, very hot and humid well you have been having some record-breaking weather temperatures yes on the continent as we call it in in Europe um, and uh, I think it's been getting as high as sort of 49 well it's all in around some places the, the amazing Portugal th yes Portugal well everywhere now I, I think now you could literally just look at the the globe and just say most of the countries around the world now are having strange weather for example behind us the view has disappeared again because it's raining so the rain is coming down very heavily and look <laughs> our lovely view from the window has disappeared it's vanished because it's raining so heavily so it doesn't feel like August here we are having the opposite we're not having hot temperatures we're not having dry weather we're having everything but the opposite of that <laughs> as you can see now behind us so I'm hoping the view behind will clear because it looks very it looks very strange well I'm glad I did the gardening this morning I looked at the forecast yes and I thought that I might be disturbing the start of your live stream because I was using my head trimmer okay which is quite noisy uh, but I stopped at about five to two hmm because I didn't want to disturb Mr. Duncan. I don't know whether you could have heard it. I think you would have done. But I've been trimming the bushes again, Mr. Duncan. OK. Trying to tidy up the garden. And uh, I feel a bit exhausted. Exhausted. I think I need a rest, a lie down. Poor Mr. Steve. I know. Poor it, me. It looks like we're standing in purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been working as well. I've got you huh? working, haven't I? Decorating. Yes, I've already mentioned that. Um, it looks like we're standing in purgatory because there's nothing behind us. Look at that. But there is. There is something behind us that 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 is supposed to be the view of Shropshire. But at the moment, <laughs> it's it's pouring with rain. So yes. unfortunately, it is not looking very nice. Any guesses? Uh, any guesses? I haven't seen any oh, guesses. Okay. Uh, Pedro says that his birthday is approaching. Uh, when is your birthday, Pedro? We would like to know. Pedro did tell us. I think it's around the 20th. I'm sure he said the 20th or the 20, 27th. It's around then. It's towards the end of August. So happy birthday, Pedro, for your birthday when it arrives. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm doing some decorating. We have Mr. Steve's mother coming to stay with us for the first time in oh. nearly in nearly two years. Oh. Can you believe it? It's almost two years since your mother came to stay with us. So your mother is coming to stay with us for, for a few weeks. <gasps> <laughs> I think she thinks she's coming for a few weeks. I, I love the fact that your mother, uh, your mother thought she was coming here for about two or three weeks. But we can't do that, you see, because because we have other things to do. I would love to have Mr. Steve's mother here for two weeks but unfortunately I would not be able to do my work because this <laughs> this is where Mr. Steve thank goodness for your work this, this <laughs> is, is what I can say no. this is where Mr. Steve's mum will be habitating <laughs> well we've had some I would say fairly accurate guesses oh Giovanni don't, don't give the answer yet though don't give the correct answer yet well OK, then. But I think I might have done. Oh, because if people look back at what Giovanni. Yes. Well, don't mention written, it. <laughs> don't mention it again. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's great. Pretty close. Pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. OK, then we will be uh, having a look. 
we will be having a look at what mr steve bought for me but also you bought me some other gifts as well didn't you steve oh you're lucky to have me mr duncan you really are you are so generous sometimes <laughs> So here is one of the things that Mr. Steve bought for me. Something for the garden. Something to look at. And here it is now. Isn't it lovely? Look at that. So if you remember in the garden, there used to be a plastic heron. But now we have a beautiful metal heron. And it's in a beautiful green. Well, it's verdigray. I suppose that's the way of uh, actually describing it. So it's actually a type of finishing that looks like it looks like copper copper that is weathered verdigray verdigray i don't know if it's real verdigray because i think verdi real verdigray is sort of copper yes that's treated with acid that's it whereas i think this is just sort of painted steel to make it look like verdigray <laughs> which is that greenish uh tint to it i th i think he looks a little sinister Oh, but you, you looks a bit sinister. You bought it. I know. Well, you, you've put it in, Mr. Dunker, but you haven't put it up straight. No, but so I've got to go and uh, <laughs> straighten it. Anyway, because it looks like it's falling over. Well, it's just <laughs> it's not falling over. It's just temporary. So it's it's sloping slightly. It's yes. slightly slanted. But I think it looks quite nice in that position. It looks very, very artistic. I like the green against the red bush. Yes, that red bush to the right. That's what I've been cutting. Uh, this morning um, and a crane says Vitas uh, it does look like a crane mm. you're right in it, fact but it is a heron it in fact it's a heron which is a similar type of bird with long legs that uh, they use for wading in the water so that they can catch fish mm. uh, and we do we do have some herons around here and they fly by and there are some of our neighbours who have lovely fish ponds with beautiful fish, but quite often their fish will disappear because of the herons that come down and, well, basically they eat the fish <laughs> from the ponds. Toshal, hello Toshal, says, uh, Mr Duncan <laughs> needs shoes because he has seven-year-old ones. Yes. Well, instead of get, getting you sort of sculptures for the garden, mm -hmm. uh, I did actually contemplate. Shall I tell you what I was going to get you for your birthday instead? I'm probably going I to have got you. OK. Uh, I was going to take you out to a shopping centre and buy you new clothes. Oh, I see. I was going to actually do that. But I thought, hmm, would Mr. Duncan want to spend his birthday in a shopping centre? No. Uh, exactly. No, exactly. So I thought, no, I went against that idea. Of course, I wouldn't buy clothes for you because I don't know whether they will fit. It's a very risky thing to do. Yes, never buy clothing for people. It's always a risk. Socks are all right. Yes. Because, you know, T-shirts. Yes. But trousers, shoes, mm. very difficult to choose those because you don't know that they will fit the person yes anything that's um, been styled to a certain size it's always risky and, and if i buy clothing i always like to be there in the shop and try it on so i never like to buy clothing off the internet unless of course i know it will fit like a hat for example or maybe underpants underpants those you can buy. Normally you can buy your underpants and as long as you get the right size, it doesn't cause any uncomfortable chafing. But you're right, Toshal. Mr Duncan does need a bit of a, a makeover, a wardrobe makeover. My clothes. My, look at my beautiful clothes. Well, that's my tie you're wearing Yes, there. I've had... <laughs> yes, we, we, do you know how old this tie is? It's a few years old. This tie is over 20 years old. Is it? Yes. I can't believe I ever used to wear that. It's not a very, you wouldn't call it a conservative tie, would you? No. That's a tie for somebody who wants to get noticed. Well, most most people these days wear very colourful or, or ties that have patterns. So I don't think this is unusual these days, but it is an old tie. Yeah. So, so yes, maybe I do need some new clothes, perhaps a new pair of shoes or maybe a new pair of trousers or jeans 
You do need some new jeans. Is it a flamingo? Yes, again, it does look like a flamingo. Mm. But in fact, it's a heron. A mm. heron. Uh, are we going to see flags of the world? We might have a look at flags of the world if you oh. want them. Well, so um, it's your I, I'm actually leaving it to you today. It is your choice. We are being very democratic here today. So if you want to see flags of the world in two minutes from now. Yeah. Let me let know. Let us know. Well, Nisar definitely does. Yeah. Let me know now. Uh, Tell Nisar me now. Definitely does. Tell me now. Uh, will we be seeing Mr. Steve's mother on the live stream? <laughs> that says sat now. Uh, unfortunately, not. Mother is not keen on appearing on camera live. No. Um, she just doesn't want to. So I, I've, we've asked. Yes. And the answer has been no. In fact, I think it's safe to say that most people we know would never want to come onto the live stream in all of the years 15 years i think you're the only person other than me who's actually been on the live stream maybe some some brief guest appearances for example when when we were in portugal i think a couple of your work colleagues came on but that's it in the, in 15 years i virtually had no one else come on to my lessons or my live streams no never well i said so we can't do flags of the world yet i'm doing a score so so far we've had one person saying yes hmm. one person saying no i don't miss the flags and we've had another person saying i'm indifferent <laughs> says fact, palmyra so that that's a neutral so so far we haven't got a positive or a negative. We're, we're neutral at the moment. Well, we only have 50 seconds. Uh, Maori is, is is against. 50 seconds. Uh, well, no, yes. Uh, neither me, says, says somebody else. Victoria. Uh, no, I'm afraid the overwhelming so far is is a no. Oh, really? Yeah, so far. Are you sure about uh, that? Yes. Yeah. So if anybody that wants the flags of the world, now is your chance to say, yes, I want them. Huh? So we've got... Uh, only one four, three against, and one neutral. Yes. Um, oh, Alessandra isn't interested okay. either. Well, all I can say, Steve, is we're not having a break. There will be no break. <laughs> so you're going to have to now carry on for another hour. Oh, Alessandra see. wants. Oh, right. OK, right. I, yeah. th I think this is more oh, to do. Yeah. I think this is more about mm. making sure that Mr. Steve does some work I today. Know, couple, we're getting lots of lots of votes in, but so far, oh, yeah. right, another yet. Yeah, the yeses are catching up, Mr. Duncan. The yeses are catching up. You have to be quick because it's three o'clock. Well, you, we can go over a bit, surely. I don't yes, want... if you want it, say yes or no now. You've got something like 10 seconds. Well, it's already three o'clock, so. Well, let's go for a bit longer. No. This uh, is not very interesting, yes. by the way. <laughs> well, I think it is. No. Well, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven no's one, two, three, four, four, and uh, five uh, uh, yeses. Uh, 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 no, the no, the no's are just yeah. The no's are just yeah. What yeah. does that mean? The no's. Are, we're now at about ten no's now. <laughs> Eleven no's. All I can say is never let Mr. Steve arrange a general election because you will have no idea who is won. Well, I am. Look, look, I've done the for and against there. Look. <laughs> So, so are we are we unanimous? We are unanimous, and yes, oh, in fact, yeah. Mm. There are no, no flags of the world. I've got to work harder, haven't that's I, it, Mr. Duncan? I've you, got you, to work harder. You've actually you've actually made a noose for your own neck because now you have to stay with us. Giovanni says, "Does much Wenlock have a flag of its own?" There is a crest, a crest for much Wenlock, uh, but but there isn't really a flag. To be honest, you normally find that local towns don't have flags, although some do have something we call a crest, which is a representation of the things that that particular area is well known for. So around here, of course, on the much Wenlock crest, <laughs> there is the abbey, there is the old clock and maybe I'm on there. Maybe perhaps I'm on the crest somewhere doing right. this why would you be doing that i'm waving in a, in a friendly okay. way well the people have spoken mr duncan 
Yeah. People have spoken. If this was an election, it would be a landslide for the nose. OK. Uh, but anyway, we're moving on from that. Uh, what do you what do we actually? Um, oh, please, no, no, it's hmm? too late, Nisa. Sorry, Nisa. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Um, <laughs> Steve is now saying that the polling has closed. The polling has closed. And unfortunately, the nose won the day today but next time it might be different i mean we still had one two three four five six yeses unfortunately we had 12 no's <laughs> I'm, by the uh, way if, you, if you're watching this on the repeat i'm sorry about this just skip ahead about five minutes and then and maybe mr steve <laughs> will have finished talking about his voting system maybe we, maybe we could show like 10 seconds of it <laughs> no. well that's not fair because then only I'll tell you what, why don't we play it at the end? OK. No? Have you cleaned your teeth today, by the way? Oh, thanks a lot. I've, I've eaten a banana. Oh, smells disgusting. <laughs> it smells absolutely disgusting. I don't know what you've had in your mouth, but it smells... A banana, a banana, a yeah. big banana. Are you sure? Yes. Are I you have. sure that's what it was? Oh, look, Maori's put all the flags on. How lovely. I don't think they're all the flags. I think there's, <laughs> I think there's many more... Anyway, Steve, another thing that you bought for me, another thing to go in the garden. Just yeah, look at nice. this, a lovely new bird feeder, because unfortunately the old bird feeder was looking a little old and worn out and it was starting to bend in the middle. So Steve bought some new bird feeders and also a new bird feeding station as well. So isn't that lovely? So a brand new bird feeder. It is now straight. It doesn't have any bends. It doesn't droop, unlike Mr. Steve, first thing in the morning. And also you can see there is also a little thing to stop the squirrels from climbing up. And there is another view. So this is the new bird feeder. Thank you, Mr. Steve, by the way, for your lovely gifts. Isn't that nice? And you can see that there is a glass sphere or half of a glass sphere which stops the squirrels from climbing up so that is something you can install on your bird feeder and it will stop the squirrels from climbing up and stealing your nuts so yes some lovely gifts lovely gifts from mr steve lisa does point out that it is independence day so you should get flags of the world <laughs> I guess. OK, we might we might show it at the end. Ah, oh, right. That means ah, there's an incentive to stay the course. <laughs> Actually, somebody said, here's a good phrase somebody used. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the fence when it comes to the showing of the of the flags of the world. Uh. And of course, that's a good phrase, isn't it? Sitting on the fence. Yes. Yeah. If you sit on the fence, it means you're making no opinion you're giving no opinion you are staying neutral you have no strong opinion you are not going to say what you think you are just going to sit on the fence yeah so thanks very much for that mm -hmm. uh, i can't i can't find who it was that said that but thank you anyway because it's just another word we can explain yes here we go then let's have a look at the other gift that steve bought and this is the mystery gift this is the mystery gift and then I will show you the answer. <laughs> so this is the mystery gift that Mr. Steve bought. One of many of the gifts that he gave me on Thursday for my birthday. But what is it? Well, here comes the answer right now. Are you ready? It will slowly reveal itself. And Giovanni, congratulations, you got it right. <gasps> it is a cockerel. Look at that. And it's a big one. In fact, that's what I said, wasn't it? When I opened the gift, I said to Mr. Steve, I said, that is a very big. <coughs> <coughs> I'm just censoring you, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that word. You can say cockerel. That's true. Yes. Cockerel, like like Mr. Cockerel, who often comes up. <laughs> yes, I think he recognises that that other cockerel. 
Uh, you've left the you've left the tag on showing uh, who's made it, Mr. Yeah, Duncan. That's all right. I don't think it matters. We'll have to take that off. It's better than what you normally do. You normally leave the price on. <laughs> Mr. Steve is very well known for whenever he buys a gift for someone, he always leaves the price on the gift. I don't. <laughs> Many times. What well, occasionally, occas very occasionally, I have done, but not not for a while. <laughs> many, many right. times. <laughs> he's he's done it to me. He's bought me cards in the past, birthday cards and Christmas cards. And then on the back, it still has the price, the sticker on the back. <laughs> it's great. Sergio yeah. says there's no point in flags of the world if my flag isn't there, which is a skull and crossbones, I oh, think. Is that right? That's it. It looks like the Sergio. <laughs> it's, it's called the Jolly Roger, the pirate flag, <laughs> something, something I enjoy now and again. <laughs> uh, is that with the, the giant cockerel? <laughs> God, it is really it is really raining, Mr. Duncan. I'm so glad I did the uh, the uh, gardening earlier. I haven't finished. I've got to sweep up all the mess. Hmm. Uh, but, I, I, you know, but there you go. I shall enjoy doing that later. Okay, thanks. Thanks for your lovely gifts, Mr. Steve. Yes. Very nice. And also we had some lovely chocolates as well. I know. Which for some reason look purple, <laughs> but they're not. They're green. That is very odd. It's very strange. I don't know why it looks purple. Is it to do with your, you know, technology? It's to do with my technology. So there, there are some lovely chocolates. They are actually green, even though they don't look green. But they are mint chocolates and they are absolutely delicious. And Mr. Steve made me feel so special on Thursday. Gifts. We had a delicious meal in the evening. And also we had a lovely live stream as well at the top of the Reekin, at the top of the hill that you can see normally from the house like like this. You see, so there it is. That is where we were on Thursday. We were high up right up there. You can see it raining. Yes, it is really it's throwing it down. It's raining cats and dogs, as they say chocolates yes chocolates today we have some interesting subjects to talk about first of all steve here's a good one not only for you but also for you as well watching out there what is that mr duncan have you ever left a review for a product or a comment on a news story or video have you ever done that have you ever typed a comment or maybe a review of something. Lots of people do it nowadays. There are some people who spend a lot of their time writing comments and reviews of things that they've bought. I suppose a good example is Amazon. Amazon, which sells lots and lots of different things. And they also encourage you to leave comments as well or reviews. And I've done this in the past. I've actually left reviews of products. For example, this hat that I'm wearing now, I actually left an actual review. Would you like to see my little review? No, not really. Oh, OK. Was well, it good? Guess what? You're going to see it anyway. So there it is. There is my my review. This is my actual review that I left on Amazon for the hat. This hat that I'm wearing now. So I say super hat. Great quality. Isn't that nice? This is an awesome hat. Awesome. This is an awesome hat. Perfect fit and very comfortable. Very good value for the price. I got the white one, which looks pretty cool. All of the stitching and the fasteners appear robust and look like they will last a long time. Very pleased with this and will probably buy a couple more. Five stars. So there is an example of a review and that's a real one. That's a review that I actually left on Amazon for for this hat that I'm wearing now. And I think it is nice sometimes to leave a comment or sometimes we call it feedback. Well, Victoria says that she has left a couple of comments on your videos, on your videos and another one by a very good art expert. And. I have noticed, Mr. Duncan, that I tend to, particularly with news stories, I'm getting to the point where I seem to keep commenting, putting yes. comments. 
public comments this is something steve has started doing recently now in the past you didn't really do this but steve has started leaving comments <laughs> on i just i'm so distracted by the background look there's nothing there <laughs> it uh, it really is chucking it down yes it looks like we're chucking it down looks like we've landed in <laughs> purgatory <laughs> it's a whiteout you could say uh well uh, yeah, so I, I've started putting comments, but of course you've got to be very careful, um, just like you have to if you're on Twitter, which I'm not, but you are on Twitter. I have Twitter. I don't use it all the time, but I do occasionally leave, but you, you've leave got to be comments. Very careful what you put into the public domain, mm. the public arena, public space, because if you say something that is controversial or is against what people are thinking at the moment hmm. you've certainly got to be careful you don't make comments to upset people in any way hmm. and uh, because otherwise you might get uh, a lot of people coming down on you with a ton of bricks uh, okay. and with uh, a ton of bricks yes don't they come down like a ton of bricks I'm not sure they don't literally bring a ton of bricks around your house and leave them outside your door but you've got to be very careful have you not if you're going to make comments about things yes. on public things places like the internet like twitter so, uh, social so, media mm, social media yes publishing things on social media especially your your own opinions or your thoughts or your response these days you might find that if you type something in anger it might come back one day to haunt you yes because i mean for example we've had uh, politicians sports people mm. people in the public eye famous people like yourself mr duncan uh who have become famous and people like them and then somebody goes and finds out a tweet or a comment that they made 20 years ago yes and then they say look this person's racist mm. because they made oh. a comment 20 years ago about something that may or may not have been you know and it's become this is the world we're living in now that someone can say something 20 years ago or 30 years ago and then get a lot of flack a lot of problems well, with people get, saying no well what happens that, is uh, they get worse than that they get cancelled they get cancelled yes your, your career over everything you're doing in your life ended we, we all say things that we regret don't we and things that we might have said in the past things that we might have said to people mm. and we apologize and we regret doing it but unfortunately if you're famous and in the public eye mm. um then I'm afraid it's there is you know there's no point in you being able to come back from it now you're yes. cancelled because even though you might have said something 20 years ago you don't even believe that anymore that isn't your opinion it doesn't matter how much you apologize people will still say right cancelled yes so that TV show cancelled yeah that's it your career career, career cancelled although it, 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 it doesn't always end badly so there are some people who've managed to come back like a phoenix rising from the ashes but it doesn't happen very often but of course here in the UK we have professional commentators who do it on purpose so they do it because they want the publicity so there are certain people who will say things that might appear rude or maybe sexist or racist but they say it because they want the attention they want people to get angry at them because then they get more publicity so it is a very strange world the the world of the internet and social media yes as sergio points out it's always there once you put something out there in cyberspace hmm. it's there forever well the problem is nowadays a lot of people will record or save something called a screenshot so even if you write something and then you delete it later somebody somewhere has a copy of what you wrote yes so even if you delete it it doesn't mean it's gone remember the internet never forgets it never forgets so there might be something you've done or said or typed many years ago 
and you've forgotten all about it but someone out there will look for something you've said in the past if you are famous or well known and then they will publish it and your career is over <laughs> Luciana makes a lovely comment mm -hmm. and says that's why I don't use social media I don't use social media I remember a line in Hamlet Shakespeare we've got cultured people watching us today Mr Duncan yes William Shakespeare Polonius says to his son reserve judgment in other words don't judge and don't make comments just reserve just hold back stop think you know it's very easy to very quickly just type something mm. and react it in an emotional way and i've learned now mr duncan that i'll write i might write something uh and then i think well i'll go away for 10 or 15 minutes and mm. then i'll come back and then i'll reread it and mm. think is this appropriate or you know do i really think this or did i just make that comment mm. due to emotional impulse never type and send a message angry never do that. that's what they say that's the advice <laughs> never never get angry about something and then type and send it never do that because that is when things go horrendously Reserve wrong judgment that is you know don't be too quick to judge mm. uh, all, because you know you might be reacting emotionally although uh, to be fair William Shakespeare was around when when there was no internet so imagine nowadays if William Shakespeare was alive I think he would be one of the most popular Twitter users because I think he would be very mischievous I think William Shakespeare if he was alive today would have a lot of followers on Twitter and I think sometimes he would say things that might upset certain people because that's what he did at the time when he was writing some of his plays he didn't just do it because he enjoyed it but sometimes he was challenging the conceptions of the time and also allowing people to to remember historical moments as well so th those were themes that Shakespeare often often referred to or went back to the meaning of life the meaning of life the meaning of death the meaning of love Shakespeare loved all of that he really did so I think if Shakespeare was around now I think he would be <laughs> he would be on and I think a lot of people would be arguing with him now come here Shakespeare Shakespeare I agree I disagree with you about what you said there in that sonnet of course some people seem to get away with anything don't they, they do. I mean our current Prime Minister has said all sorts of very questionable things in the past in news articles that he's written and and yet he's not been cancelled uh, but other people seem to get cancelled I don't know why that is mm. why some people seem to get away with it and others don't but um, I suppose that's life you know what I, I can't believe we haven't been cancelled at some point because we've said some very strange things we have. and some things that well mainly Mr Steve well we're clearly not famous enough to be cancelled yes what I would say I think so as long as we be, as long as we remain unknown and obscure I think we're safe I thought I'd say that before Sergio said it yes that's it <laughs> so there you can't say it now because we said it so have you ever left a review so this is something you've started doing recently Steve you started leaving messages on YouTube videos but also the other yes. thing is you, you you've got very very excited when the person who, who owns the channel they, they like your comment and you, you get quite yes ex excited and I said to Mr Duncan you see so when you're when your viewers when you out there um, say something to Mr Duncan or make a comment uh, and then uh, Mr Duncan likes it back I know how that feels because I've been doing it to other people that I follow on YouTube and they make a video and then I make a comment and then if I get a like or a heart they give you a little love heart a love heart oh makes me feel so special that my comment has been looked at <laughs> by the person that's made that video <laughs> so that's what I do as well so quite often I will I will click my little love heart next to your messages under my videos and and then you will know that I've seen them with my own retinas yes so yeah people are saying that they have made comments 
uh, uh, particularly on um, Amazon for things that they've bought because they think it helps people hmm. to decide whether to buy that product. And I think, do you know, I, I think you've got to be careful sometimes. I always like to look at the reviews, the Amazon reviews. Hmm. Um, but I think, but once I, I looked at one particular product, it was a particular cream. I won't say what it was for. <laughs> I don't want to what know. What part of my body it was for. I don't want to know. Uh, and it got something like 5,000 incredibly positive reviews. Mm. So I bought it and it was useless. And I thought, well, why has it got 5,000? Why has it got all these reviews? I think it was 13,000. And then I got an email from the company that made it saying, we'll pay you five pounds if you give us a good review. Yes, so it. obviously what they've done is they've got all those good reviews by actually paying people mm. to give them a good review. Yeah. What happens sometimes as well, people will get free products or free samples and then they are asked to give a review on, for example, Amazon. And so, so this quite often happens. So it doesn't always mean that you trust the reviews I always remember one of my reviews that I left <laughs> concerning the Big Bang Theory and it started out as a short review but it ended up being a huge long essay and it is still actually on Amazon so here is a bit of it <laughs> on the screen right now here it is good grief so this is part this is only part of my review that I wrote in 2011 about I think it was season four of the Big Bang Theory. And this is when, as far as I'm concerned, the, the show started to go bad. I hope you're not going to read all of that out, Mr. Duncan. Well, I'm not going to read it all <laughs> out, but I'm going to leave it on screen so so other people can read it. So this is just the first part of it. 2011. Yes. Did you uh, get many likes? Well, you don't get likes. For, for comments. Oh, it was a right. OK, because right. it's on Amazon. You don't normally get voted. Oh, it was on Amazon. Right. OK. Yes. Fine. Yes. Well, that's I. Uh, yes, that's where it was. I did oh. say that <laughs> Amazon. So uh, I left uh, a review, but it started out as one paragraph, but it ended up being around about six paragraphs because I kept going back and updating it. So this is only the first part of what turned into a very long essay <laughs> and it is it is actually still available to read uh, on on Amazon once it's there it's not going to go well I can delete it of course yes you can I can delete it but it's nothing controversial it's just that I didn't I didn't like the show I thought the show was being ruined and so I decided to write a very long review but over time I kept I kept adding more updating the review <laughs> you must so, have been really affected by this change in the show I, I did well I, I used to like the Big Bang Theory and, and then they they ruined it by turning it into a generic romantic situation comedy which ruined it it, it did it did yeah. but so then, this is yeah. something we both actually agree on so we actually stopped watching the Big Bang Theory after season five we, we didn't watch it anymore so we, ha we don't know what happened after that no idea because we, we lost interest because it stopped being the, the sort of show that we liked. It became something else. It became like the, the, the situation comedy, the comedy show, which is all about romance and boyfriends and girlfriends and blah, blah, blah. But that's been done thousands and thousands of times before. And it's very boring. Yeah, but of course, in order to pay the huge salaries that the stars wanted, the only way of being able to do that was to broaden the uh, scope of the audience that were watching. So, you know, people were interested in, in, in science geeks. They wanted love interest and mm. romance. Uh, so, you know, that was the only well, way of being able to pay the stars their huge salary. What, what actually happened, and I, I will tell you, this is exactly what happened with the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory was getting good viewers, but they only had men or young people who were nerds and geeks watching which is good but unfortunately for the tv station for the tv network that they want more people watching so they said look you've got to change this we've got to have girls they've got to find partners and they've got to all be heterosexual so we'll have none of that other nonsense going on we'll have we'll have them they're, they're all going to have girlfriends they're going to be straight 
and, and, and we're going to have less science, less nerds. A bit like friends. And so it became very dull, very boring. It just sounded or seemed, it seemed like every other programme that had been made in the past. It's so like a lot of shows. It's, they start off with good ideas and it's very good. Mm. And then they run out of ideas, but they carry on making it anyway well, because everyone's making lots of money out that's of it. That's it. But what I'm saying is they changed it to get more viewers. Oh, yes. Yeah. They yeah, wanted the women, I said, yes. the middle aged women and, and, and more people watching it so they could make more series, more Shred episodes. Tang says that they liked Breaking Bad. Yes, we did. We were obsessed with that. Yes. Breaking Bad, a very good TV show. Yes. Also the follow up called Better Call Saul, which looks like it's going to be delayed for a very long time because the star of the show, of course, Bob Odenkirk, recently suffered a heart attack on set whilst right. filming the new right. episode. So so he's now recuperating from his heart attack. So it looks as if we won't be seeing Better Call Saul until maybe 2022. He might be all right. I mean, you can you can resume work after a heart attack after no, about six to he, eight weeks. He, no, he hasn't. Done, hasn't he? No, that's what I just said. Right. He hasn't. He, he's, he's, he wrote a Twitter post a few days ago and he's not he's not back yet. So it looks right. as if there might be a little bit of a delay for the new series of Better Call Saul, which we love as well. Although it's a bit it's a bit. It's a bit more boring. They drag it out a lot. Boring. More, never mind. It's not boring. <laughs> what are you talking about? It just uh, the, some of the episodes sort of talk about dragging it out. Yes, you but anyway, you can't have you can't have gunfights in every episode because then that would also be as boring. It did, mind you. It did end. That last episode was very Ooh. exciting. Anyway, Steve, what? We've only got half an hour. Well, okay. You don't have to cut me off like that. <laughs> what are you going to talk about next, Mr. Duncan? Oh, Addy. Addy says, yes, a show with only straight guys. Andy. A show without only straight guys does sound pretty boring. Well, this this is one of my points. The, the only reason why I mention that is because, of course, Jim Parsons is actually gay in real life. And yet they force his character to be heterosexual. So I always thought that was very odd. They should have just run with that if they'd been brave enough to do that. I think you would have had many more viewers and a large demographic. So I always thought that was a big mistake, especially when they used to make jokes as well. Some very cruel jokes <laughs> as well. And they once asked, what, what does Sheldon like? What is he into? And, and I think one of the other cast members said, what, what is he? We don't even know what he is. What it what he is, we don't know what he is, which I always thought was very strange and quite cruel, considering the actor playing the part is actually gay in real life. Just make Sheldon gay and get on with it. It would have been more. I mean, that's what Sergio said. It wouldn't. No, sorry. Um, yes, Ad says it would. It just would have been more interesting. <laughs> yes, because not not be, not not because of that but because it it all became a little too forced just would have been more interesting forcing but you obviously see? the people that were anyway let's not go into that too much no i just thought it was interesting sergio also makes a comment about doctor who and how that is what sergio is effectively saying is that doctor who has become very politically correct yes and it's a big turn off to people watching because you can yes. see what they're doing but that that's you it. You can see what the program makers are doing. Mm. They want to be politically correct, so they put in certain yes. characters. But it all looks very forced. When you say what, what do you mean by certain characters? Well, I'm not going to read. You know, I, I, I don't want to get into it. Sergio's oh. uh, Sergio but, Sergio has. But has the Big Bang Theory what? point is, is, I think, is not quite the same because the actor in that show was very unique, and it would have been more suitable to make the rest of his character equally as going in a different direction. But they didn't. They they they, they were cowards. And I, I will say this. I, I really I wrote this, by the way, on on my Amazon review. It, it, it came up later on. So I, I was quite upset because I think that would have been a great angle to take. Also, you never had any black people in the Big Bang Theory. They didn't have any any black friends it was a little bit like friends from the 1990s 
very similar it, it fell into that mold like I, like yeah. friends very yeah. very generic could you really going on and on about yeah. big bang theory mr duncan it, it really did upset me you'd i tell you cut me off if i'd been going on about it like this you'd have cut me off oh we haven't got time for that mr steve let's move on well not really no well but this is relevant to what we're talking about so yeah, passing comment maybe. so so we do often leave comments steve likes to leave comments on videos and i like to leave reviews on products or places mm. there is a very good website called tripadvisor that we used to use in the past when when we could actually go on holiday <laughs> but we can't anymore at the moment we can't travel anywhere unfortunately but yeah, it's very good very interesting. giovanni makes a good point do you mm. find that in terms of films or music we've reached a level where everything's been used seen or done ah yes so this is the problem isn't it we've probably exhausted all the ideas and they keep remaking films and whenever they remake them they're never as good as the original ones yes uh, but yes maybe we've just run out of ideas there are very few original stories maybe there aren't being told at the moment we have remakes we have another ghostbusters film coming soon oh. with children <sighs> what no no please please don't spoil ghostbusters anymore we i love ghostbusters from the 1980s with with you know bill murray and dan Aykroyd and the other other two harold ramis yeah lovely lovely film brilliant film funny the, the sequel not so good but then in 2016 they decided to have women all women as ghostbusters which is not a bad idea as long as it's good and as long as it's funny but sadly it wasn't either of those things <laughs> and and coming soon steve we have ghostbusters with children i'll pass on that what what could possibly go wrong <laughs> maybe it'll be you see the film industry's got to keep on making money so they can't just say well we'll show the original ghostbusters they're not going to make much money from that uh, so they'll remake it uh, yes. to make lots of money you know it's all it's all about money well actually i can tell you what it's about money it's, ab it's about no no it actually isn't it's about lots of arguments that have taken place over the years about who actually owns the copyright to ghostbusters because there were there was also another tv show a tv show called the real ghostbusters which was a breakaway from that but they had to change the name because of the copyright and so a lot of licensing also came into effect because if you buy the rights to something steve did you know that you only have 10 years to use it it's a bit like the patent on a drug yes. so if you buy the rights to a story or an idea you have to use it within 10 years or else somebody else then can come along and buy it off you uh, another good example is dune as well one of my favorite movies from the 80s has also been remade and that's coming out later this year i have to say i am looking forward to the new version of dune again another famous story from the 1960s it was actually written in the same year i was born yeah, so yeah. nice yeah. t-shirt says fernanda thank you uh, this color you would call it plum it's a plum purple you would call it plum color i like the way you've got it l u m b i like the way you've got it open there well you've just done that that's how i had it <laughs> there's no b at the end of plum isn't there it's p l u m uh, oh yes that's right if it's plumbing you put a b on it you know that what that did, how long it take <coughs> you to uh, spot steve, that mistake mr okay. duncan Don't, we do. <laughs> steve that that coincides very well with what we're about to talk about plums ah, words that are always spelt wrong ah well you see i knew what you were going to do and i was wondering whether you would notice you didn't know that ah, you have well, no you see there's no flies on you mr duncan yes which means that mr duncan his <laughs> brain is sharp and he's always noticing things okay uh, <laughs> and once again steve over explaining things well no but, it's a it's a phrase people don't know probably might not know what the phrase there's no flies on you yes. what that means it means you're sharp you know 
you can't be caught out I'm a smart cookie yes here we go then words that are always spelt wrong I suppose a good one is plum <laughs> like the fruit yes so you see what I did there yes <laughs> okay so yes we saw what you did let me do a bit of teaching <laughs> P L U M no B but you can also have P L U M B yes if you are talking about a straight line so a line normally that is vertical is called a plum as well so if you are building something if you are putting up a structure you often use a plum to to make sure that everything is straight it is not wonky it is not crooked it is completely yep. straight so you will use a plum p l u m b and of course plum p l u m is the fruit b e r plumber says marty ah, somebody yes. that uh, we're having a plumber round this okay. week oh okay to fix a leaking tap we need a new tap so we're getting a plumber round to fit it yes I, that is outside my skill area uh so we're getting somebody a professional plumber in to come and do it as most things are thank you uh, it, it, steve steve's okay at cutting bushes but anything more than cutting bushes anything more anything more complicated than that so disparaging disparaging so we're getting a new tap if you are disparaging <laughs> means you're criticizing people yes. putting them down uh, do you think I'd look more handsome with a beard mr. Duncan no it would be white well Faye thinks that I would you would look like Santa Claus don't forget last year well sorry not last what year I have to take what I have to take all this abuse earlier this year remember I was actually growing a beard I had a beard for about <laughs> five yeah, oh, that's right. it, was it, was, hilarious. it was awful it was a horrible experience <laughs> <laughs> so so that's why I don't have a beard anymore because I grew one but I didn't like it oh yes that's true look it matches my tie says Vitas your tie matches I mean, you, it is my tie your shirt my shirt my this isn't a t-shirt what do you call this type of shirt mr. <laughs> it's a polo top a polo shirt um, so it's short sleeved, okay. short sleeved with a collar. Mm, great, and that has nothing to do with words that are always spelt wrong. Here we go. Then. <laughs> so here are some words, Steve. I'm just commenting on what people say. Here are some words that are often so spelt cruel to me. Despite, you know, uh, and look at look at what I bought you for your birthday. Don't you think he's been very cruel to me? Don't you? Yes. I am being quite reasonable. Here's the first word, often spelt wrong access shouldn't that be often spelt wrongly no you can spell something wrong words that are always spelt shouldn't it be wrongly mr Duncan? No, you can say wrong you, you spelt mm. something wrong or incorrectly it wrong. or wrongly spelt words that are always spelt incorrectly yes all right anyway mm. words that are always spelt wrong or incorrectly <laughs> happy now in American English you see they don't do that they don't do the Lee at the end they never do that well we're not in America no but you might you know it doesn't Steve Steve take my advice it doesn't matter in this situation you mean in modern English it doesn't matter is what you're saying access is a word that people often spell incorrectly because <laughs> it has two C's and two S's so quite often people will either forget about one of the C's or forget about one of the S's at the end so access it might look like a simple word but you will be surprised how many people spell this wrong Lee <laughs> high five Nisa <laughs> yes so what does that word mean are we going to explain the meaning of the word as well as the spelling or are we assuming people know what the word means access well of course access means a, a point of of entry where you where you can get to somewhere or into something you access you go in you enter 
you move forward into maybe a certain place or maybe a place that is secure and locked you get access you can go in to is get that, is that a door that needs uh, the hinges oiling <laughs> all all it was missing from that sound effect was the echo like this this is what it should have sounded like you see that that sounds much better with the echo I'm maybe. sure it does I'm thinking but wasn't so. there a credit card called access there, was. there used to be a credit card card called access yes. so the, the inference is that you've got this credit card and that gains you access it still to all the yeah. good it's, in the world it still exists does it yes right okay access your flexible friend they used to say here's another one they're getting harder here's a hard one Steve Ooh. <laughs> aggravation aggravation yes a little bit of trouble a little bit of fighting maybe a little bit of maybe maybe there is a disagreement a noisy disagreement taking place aggravation to aggravate something is to make something worse you are making something worse than it already is aggravation again a lot of people forget that there are two G's quite often they will just spell it with one and you might the the, the A in the middle you might replace that and you might think there was an I there aggravation mm. might yes. burden you yes so it is quite common for the pronunciation of a word to sound very different from the actual spelling and we have some good examples coming up of that I've mm. aggravated my shoulder yes because I've got an injured shoulder yes because I've worked so hard in the garden and I've aggravated it today made it worse by doing more gardening today not to the point of it being anything too problematic okay but yes I've act to aggravate an injury yes or to aggravate somebody mr. Duncan often aggravates me on the live stream and upsets me and vice versa true it is true here's another one. Oh, here's another one that a lot of people get wrong associate Asso yeah is it double s is it double c yeah. is it one two c's yeah. what is it is it yes. one s especially if you have double s or double c in a word because quite often you will forget which one is which does it have two s's or two c's sometimes it will have two s's and one c quite often it will have two c's and maybe two s's are there any rules to help us or is it just something you've just got to learn and remember unfortunately with this it is something you have to remember it's not like that lovely phrase I before E except after C well that's a very basic grammar rule that's it but there isn't one for double S's or double C's no because many of the words come from different places or different languages so you will you will find sometimes the spelling and this is where English is really confusing for most people even people who are way up there at Oxford University even they lie awake at night getting very sweaty thinking about it I don't know if this is a word you've got coming up, but Palmyra has mentioned one mm. for cutting things. Scissors. Oh, yes. That's Scissors. A good, I haven't got that word. But you have correctly spelled it there. Mm. Um, yes. S-C-I-S-S-O-R-S. -S -S -S. Mm. Yeah. Scissors. That's a very difficult spelling to remember. Mm. Oh, that's it. I was, that's it I, that's I was, the end of the comment so associate means to be involved with or, or or to be connected with another person you are connected with a certain endeavor something you are doing something you are carrying out you a, are connected a business associate yes somebody who works with you in business hmm. you're connected to them you are connected to them by by the thing you are doing together oh steve now this is a this is a lovely word derived from I think it comes from French and it is a horrible word to spell I think this might be one of the worst words in English to spell it is a really horrible word connoisseur connoisseur it was a question that was asked on a game show that we watched the other night yes they asked 
one of the contestants to spell that word and they got it right they actually spelt it correctly that's the amazing thing so it, it is not normally it's not an easy word to spell c o double -N, n o i double -S, s e u r connoisseur and it is a person who is an expert in a certain field maybe they are they have a lot of knowledge about a particular thing they are a connoisseur so not only do they like that thing but they are also very knowledgeable about it they are they, they have a lot of interest and also knowledge at the same time they are very good at judging the quality of a certain thing i suppose most people think of wine wine connoisseur yes a person who is an expert on wine kiambi asks is this video currently live yes it is it is now what time is it now mr steve move your head down slightly ah that's it it is 3 48 in the afternoon oh yes I'm, on uh, sunday I'm covering up the oh, how strange that i'm covering up the clock don't worry yes sunday the 15th of august and we are live at 3 48 uk time I hope that answers your question. Yes, William said. William said, "Not heard of the word connoisseur." Yes, mm. somebody who we often, as Mr. Duncan said, associate that word with somebody who might be a little snooty. Not necessarily, you know, but a wine connoisseur. Yeah. If somebody was to say you were a wine connoisseur, you would mm. think that person was a little snooty, sipping wine, smelling the wine. Yes. Oh, I'm a connoisseur. Mm, okay. Of wine, you can uh, have you can have a food connoisseur yes. so maybe a person who's very good at cooking knows a lot about the methods of of making food or cooking food so a connoisseur you, you can i suppose you could be a book connoisseur as well you know a lot yes. about literature so this can be used in many ways and it is used quite often sometimes as steve said it can be used negatively as well quinn's going to bed Good night. Good night to Quinn. I hope you have a lovely dream. Night, night. I hope the bed bugs don't bite. Sleep tight. Like we tend to say. Sleep tight, which of course refers to the days when beds were made of rope and you had to tie the ropes very tightly so you didn't fall on your bottom. Plagiarism. There's a difficult word to spell, mm. says Jimmy. I mentioned that last Wednesday. Did you? That word? I used that word last week. Plagiarism. Yes, to copy another person or to steal their idea. And Which lots of people have done. <laughs> I haven't got to the end of the sentence. Just let, just let me just let me finish this. Steve, let me finish the sentence. <laughs> to steal another person's idea and pass it off. To pass it off as your own. Which a lot of people do with your videos, Mr Duncan. Right, yes, Lewis says... Connoisseur is a French word, which is what you said, meaning a high knowledge of a topic. Hmm. And there we go. Knowledge. So there's a difficult word to, to remember how to spell as well. Yes. Knowledge. Yes. Knowledge. Uh, you wouldn't think there was a W in there, but there is. Yes. A, rec a record of knowledge. So your, your knowledge is are the things that you you know, you've stored, you've logged the things you know, you see. And I think that's that's how we derive that particular word you're also you're also suggesting that connoisseur i think i might be right in saying there's a wasp in the studio mr there's a, there's a wasp coming oh, it's coming right over here hello uh, there's, a, there's a little wasp <laughs> i'm not going to panic even though everything inside me is screaming um <laughs> let's hope it doesn't land on one of us i'm going to try uh, and get get the wasp to fly away so a connoisseur you would probably normally think that they hadn't had any formal education in that particular subject that they're very interested in. So there probably isn't. Well, there might be a course that you can take to become very knowledgeable in wine, but I'm not sure that there is. So if you're a connoisseur, yes, you've just got a, a great deal of knowledge over something, which you've probably acquired that knowledge yourself. It looks like you haven't been successful in getting rid of the... He'll uh, go in a minute. He'll go. If we just ignore the wasp, he's not going to sting us yeah, in any way. No, wasps are friendly. We, oh, we, we, often, we often save the lives of wasps. Oh, I think it's gone. Choir is a French word, says uh, William. William. Uh, yes. I didn't know that. Mm. 
I'm hoping that I will be able to get back to my choir. Um, you're very distracted, Mr. Duncan. I'm distracted by the wasp. I think it's gone now. It's, uh, well, they do tend to find their own way out, yes. whereas flies never find their own way out, whereas wasps are a bit more intelligent. They sort of manage to find their own way back out. Fascinate is another word that often is spelt wrongly or wrong. Fascinate. Fascinate. You have the horrible inclusion of S and C. Fascinate. So even though it sounds like one actual sound, it's actually two mixed together. Fascinate. Fascinating rhythm. Fascinating rhythm. There's a song, isn't there? There is, yes. There is a song. If you say so, I think the wasp has gone. No, I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. Oh. I saw it. Um, yes, Sergio, trust Sergio to know that a, a brand of cognac is called connoisseur. That is it's correct. It landed on me. It was, uh, it was, it was sitting. Oh, it's after your chocolates, Mr. Duncan. Oh, here we go. Maybe I can. Maybe you can lure it outside. Yes. It's all going on in the studio. You can tell this is live because we would have cut this out. We know that wasps like anything sweet. They like sugar. So they're being attracted to Mr. Duncan's putting a chocolate. I, I don't think it's going to smell it there, Mr. Duncan. What a waste of a chocolate. He's just opened a chocolate and put it on the windowsill. I've put a little piece of the chocolate. I've got some still here. In the here. hope that the wasp will smell. Oh, I can smell. I can smell mint and chocolate. Mm. Mm. Do you want a bit? No, thanks. Um, thank you, Mr. Bruno. Thank you very much. Uh, biscuit. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bruno. Uh, well, you see, uh, uh, Sergio has... Um, did we have biscuit? Did we have that as one of the words? It's gone. It's gone. Hooray! <laughs> Mr. Duncan has, has managed to lure. Lure. I He's am. lured. I'm the best. Lured the wasp out. If you lure somebody, it means you're attracting them. Are you OK? Maybe with your sexuality. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Bruno, for your donation. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Did we have biscuit as a word to spell? Mm, no. Well, Sergio has put biscuit, but he's made the... Uh, I, I think he's joking because there's no Q in biscuit. Um... You have to replace that Q with a C. Biscuit. Um, very distracted. Very distracted. The wasp has, has thrown him off course. I thought there was another one, you see. <laughs> no, there's no, uh, there's no other wasps. I'm just imagining wasps all around me now. Uh, yes. Thank you once again, Mr. Bruno, for your lovely donation. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Oh, Nissan says that my T-shirt is fascinating. It is. It's plain. You would call this a plain. There's no pattern on it. It's plain. Here's another one. Colour is obviously fascinating. Let's, let's move on because I, I can feel <laughs> I can feel my viewers. No, no, they're going up. Mr. Duncan, not down. <laughs> Trust me. Because I'm on, of course. I think they're just hoping that one of us gets stung by the wasp. Oh, biscuit is a French cognac, really. Spelt with a Q. Well, hmm. I stand corrected. Yes. So, uh, of course, in American English, they will say cookie cookie we will say biscuit in british english but yes you will often hear cookie adele now wants a piece of chocolate mm, they are delicious um, they are nice yes are very very nice lint which is a famous swiss brand of chocolate it is and when i was young if you had lint chocolates you felt like you were really <laughs> indulgent and yes you got lots of money because they were always very expensive okay very decadent Decadent. That's a good word. Cognac is a region of France. That is correct. OK, Steve. Here's another word. I've, I've had it on the screen for five Miscellaneous. minutes. Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Yes. Well, why did you say it like that? I don't know. Miscellaneous. Things that are not connected in any way to anything else. So you put them into another place. You put them together. Things that don't belong in a group or have no connection. Something that is miscellaneous. You might say the word odd. Something that does not belong to to the rest of the group. 
it is mr. miscellaneous something that is excess not needed miscellaneous but you can see this word is horrible to spell if you ask anyone to spell this word I can guarantee they will spell it incorrectly I think I would have done mm. I think if you were to ask me mr. I'm glad you haven't tried to put me on the spot by saying a word and asking me to spell it no I would not do that never ever yes miscellaneous something that you can't categorize miscellaneous something that's odd something that does not belong to the group or things that you put aside because they don't connect or fit anywhere else they become miscellaneous and yes a very common one this is a common word that is often spelt incorrectly wrong necessarily and I suppose you could also have necessary but necessarily is a little bit more naughty <laughs> because you might also think that there are two R's but there aren't so this is a very hard word to spell yeah again is it double C or is it double S hmm. we don't know there's no rule so you just have to remember it hello to Catalin or Caitlin hello to you and thanks for joining me I will be with you for a few more minutes we were going to talk about swearing today but we don't have time <sighs> so I might talk about that on Wednesday yes right. ah your ears do not fool you you heard me correctly I am back with you on Wednesday oh my Maori mm -hmm. says I like Kit Kat chocolates well that's a very interesting comment that you've made because Duncan bought a Kit Kat the other day mm. when we went on our walk up the Reekin and I had a piece and I hadn't had a Kit Kat for years mm. and uh, I was very disappointed because it did not taste anywhere near as nice as it used to that I remembered the chocolate seemed very poor quality mm. the whole thing was ruined mm. so they've obviously done something to Kit Kats and they're not the same anymore I think a lot of chocolate manufacturers nowadays are using palm oil in their chocolate and also they're not putting so much cocoa into the actual mix uh, Cadbury's have also been criticized over the years for their for changing the flavor of their chocolate and also the quality so it has a very waxy texture and also the the taste is not not as well not as chocolatey they've ruined it they've cheapened it cheapened it Kit Kats are not the same they used to be gorgeous they used to be so mm. chocolatey and and this was just oh I, I nearly spat it out it was horrible mm. um, mind you I know that they do oh yes though Mr Bruno agrees with me mm. so maybe they would I don't know what they're doing to chocolate they're cheapening it mm. and it doesn't taste as nice and well, it's very disappointing many of these manufacturers have been criticized for their use of palm oil which now is being used in many things including fuel food and and sweets as well chocolate manufacturers are using more palm oil which means that palm oil has become more popular which means that more people are growing it which means that more areas of forest are being cut down and destroyed so palm oil can be can be grown and I've got a friend gathered. that won't buy anything if it's got palm oil in it. Mm. He looks at the ingredients. If it's got palm oil, because he's an environmentalist and he cares about the environment, uh, he knows that if there's palm oil in that, there's you know rainforests have been chopped down to grow that. Yeah. So he won't buy the product. Yes. And that's it. That if we want to save the rainforests, then we've got to stop buying products with palm oil mm. in because then they won't clear forest to grow it because that's what they do but it's also become used as, as a type of fuel as well I think you can turn it into fuel mm. can't you yeah yes. so uh, one of these biofuels so it is strange when we when we develop anything new or something different quite often there is a price to pay for that thing uh, a couple of more strange words mr. Steve I think we'll have a couple of more before we disappear so we're talking about swearing on Wednesday we don't have time today we don't have sufficient time ah, ah. Uh, did you see what I did there so unfortunately we do not have sufficient time
time we don't have enough we don't have the quantity that is required it is not sufficient and of course the opposite is if you do have enough of something you can say that it is sufficient so it is sufficient or it isn't sufficient i'm starting to think that that wasp may have stung my leg but i don't think it has no you would have screamed we would have heard a loud scream it's just one of mr steve's fleas sufficient <laughs> i love the blank the blank scenery behind us that is actually the shropshire landscape but unfortunately it's raining so heavily <laughs> you can't see it it's very weird quite distracting sufficient you have enough of something it is also a very hard word to spell to have enough double f mm. i c i e n t wow do you want any more food mr duncan no i have sufficient mm. thank you yes i have enough there is enough here for me it is sufficient and finally what vicarious vicarious mm. so what does what does do you know what that means steve you're the english teacher mr duncan oh no well it's i'm just putting it out there because i'm asking i'm telling everything but i think sometimes it's, it's nice to ask a question vicarious it is well first of all it's a word that is hard to spell a lot of people get this one wrong you would think that that c could be a k couldn't mm. it or maybe a Y instead of I. Yes. Maybe V Y, which a lot of people do. They spell it wrong. And vicarious. Does anyone know what vicarious means before I go? Make you make you work today. I want to make your brain work. My brain has been working for the past two hours. <laughs> Mr. Steve is still waiting for his to turn on. Mr. Steve's brain is like a fridge, a refrigerator. You have to open the door. Oh, Victoria. And then the light will come on. But then when you close it, the light will go off again. Victoria lives in Monza, northern mm. Italy. Oh, very nice. We, there used to be a car, a, a Vauxhall Monza, an Opel <coughs> Monza, <coughs> a Vauxhall Monza, <coughs> uh, that was for, sort of sale in the 80, 1980s in the UK. And it was a nice, sleek-looking uh, sort of two-door um, sports car uh, and it, I always liked it I had a friend somebody at work that had a Monza with a three-litre petrol engine in it so there we go we often name our cars in the UK uh, from exotic sounded places in Europe hmm. uh, like Granada Ford Granada yes and Monza uh, Opel of course was the the brand uh, that Vauxhall gave to its cars in europe but we went no we, it was it was oh yeah it was vo, it was mm -hmm. Vauxhall, but we still called it opal here to make it sound posher because people thought that the the Vauxhall brand was was a sort of a cheap brand and they wouldn't buy it so they called it an opal there we go so w what's a Vauxhall then a Vauxhall. Uh, Vauxhall has a reputation no the actual word you i thought you're talking about words why we talk we call cars yeah, we certain call words or vox I don't know how it's spelled. It's Actually, V A U. It's v -A -U. Yes, that's another word that's hard to spell. V A U X A L L. Yeah, you see. Um, still going, still yes. going, but there we go. By right. The way, that is not snow behind us. It's not snowing. That is rain. The rain is coming down very heavily, and that is actual rainfall. So that's the reason why the view has, has vanished <laughs> behind us, because it's raining very heavily. Did we get the meaning of the word vicarious? I'm still waiting. I don't think anybody has suggested. Oh, I'm itching, Mr. Duncan. I am. I'm, I'm sure that wasp has had a nibble at my leg. Oh, Monza is the, is the Formula One city. City oh. for the Formula One. Right. That, so that's why they've named, they used to name a car. I used to love that word, Monza. Uh, I wish they'd bring that, that name back for a car. Yes, it was a very sleek, uh, stylish looking coupe. Yeah. Would you like to continue your own live stream after this? So I tell you what, Steve can start his own live stream after we finished and then you can talk about cars 
all you want I could I might, I might start my own the, YouTube channel yes I know we've done this before yes I might do yeah remember right. remember singing with mr. St oh, in tune with mr. Steve look it up don't uh, what about the the meaning of the word mr. Duncan you made two lessons meaning you of the meaning of the lesson at uh, the word oh well a vicarious person is what imagine <sighs> vicarious you live vicariously yes you, you just yeah live however you want you you enjoy life you enjoy life joy yes. de vivre as they say thank you Adele thank you Rosa I am back on when am I back on Wednesday I'm here on Wednesday I don't have a birthday next week unfortunately so I won't get any lovely gifts from Mr Steve of course I will still get his presents but I won't get any presents ah, uh -huh. you see what I did presents to be there to be nearby present or presents to, to, to give something a gift that is given or received bamboo for you wants to know what time will you be talking about s swearing not on Wednesday on Wednesday probably about half past two I will start talking about that because my Wednesday live stream is always shorter a little shorter but yes I will be talking about swearing uh, people who use rude words and that's what we will be discussing on Wednesday when I join you next time you know what Nissan wants don't you Nissan wants the flags of the world is he going to get it yes I hope Nisa are you still here Nisa uh, because if you are it will have been well worth you staying the course staying the course staying for the full length of time that this lesson has carried on for um, <laughs> your, your perseverance are you still here Nisa your perseverance will pay off thank you Beatrice for your lovely message a lot of nice messages today I suppose I should also mention Steve that we had a couple of nice donations for my birthday as well thanks once again to Olga and Valentin for your lovely donation and if you want to send a donation to PayPal don't forget everything I do is free it costs nothing so if you want to make a small donation or a big one if you've just won the lottery for example <laughs> we don't know if Nisa are still here even Maori is asking hmm? um, because they're both from India um, but yes we want to know because otherwise there's no point in showing flags of the world because we were no. just going to show it for Nisa no. mind you there were five other people who wanted it but it doesn't really matter because it's the end of the, the live stream anyway so, right so most people will abandon the live stream before oh, it before it finishes yes he's here no it's, yes as soon as no when I say goodbye when we say goodbye <laughs> that's when the not yet because we're still here no I was it, just saying Nisa is here that's it but but the the level won't drop until we say goodbye and then the level just uh, drops like a stone well anyway right okay Mr Duncan I'm gonna go make a cup of tea and decide on some nice sugary snack to eat because we haven't got tea cakes okay uh, so lovely to be here with you today hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give mr. Duncan a like because it really does help his progress into the world of YouTube yes I've only been uh, trying for 15 years yes so please like mr. Duncan's video if there's anything you've liked and I'm sure you have so I'll see you in a few minutes and I will say ta-ta for now to all you lovely viewers and see you next Sunday thank you Mr. Steve Bye. he is going now Mr. Steve has left the building and there you can see a view of outside that was the place where we were last Thursday we were actually at the top of that particular hill last Thursday Adele says I don't like to say goodbye well sometimes you do sometimes those little goodbyes are unavoidable but don't forget I will be back with you on Wednesday from 2 p.m. UK time back with you on Wednesday next Wednesday from 2 p.m. UK time and yes we will be talking about swearing who swears why do they swear maybe you swear maybe sometimes you use bad language Ooh, naughty naughty 
i will see you then i hope you have a good weekend wherever you are watching or maybe a good morning <laughs> perhaps already it is tomorrow where you are thanks for your company i hope you've enjoyed this i am going to leave you with those flags of the world for all those who want to see their flag and of course until the next time we meet here on youtube you know what's coming next yes you do ta-ta for now